Welcome back to Outside View Scandals. Today we're diving into one of the most notorious political scandals in American history, the Watergate Affair. Now, for those of you unfamiliar, this is the scandal that made the word gate the default suffix for every political mishap since. But trust me, this one earned it. This is the scandal that led to the resignation of a sitting U.S. president, Richard Nixon. So, buckle up, because the story has everything. Shady break-ins, political espionage, and of course, a mountain of lies. So, let's get started. Our story begins on June 17, 1972. Five men were caught breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate complex in Washington, D.C. Now, on the surface, this might sound like the setup to a low-budget crime thriller. Guys with flashlights, tape over doors, and of course, a quick arrest by security. But these weren't just random burglars. These men were tied to something far more insidious. President Nixon re-election campaign. Yes, the committee to re-elect the president, or as they charmingly called themselves, creep. The break-in was an attempt to plant wiretaps and gather intelligence on the Democratic Party's election strategy. Because apparently Nixon's team wasn't confident enough in their chances of winning a second term, so why not resort to good old-fashioned espionage? And now you might think this would have been the end of it. Five guys caught, red-handed, arrested, trial, case closed, right? Wrong. This is where things start to get interesting. The Nixon administration quickly moved into cover-up mode. And when I say quickly, I mean they were practically setting Olympic records in damage control. Nixon's aides began orchestrating hush money payments to keep the burglars quiet. The FBI was pressured to limit its investigation and White House officials were told to destroy evidence. All of this, of course, in the name of protecting national security. Because apparently in Nixon's world, national security meant making sure no one finds out you've been spying on your political rivals. Oh, and did I mention that Nixon himself got personally involved in obstructing the investigation? Yeah, the President of the United States, the guy sitting in the Oval Office. He's now making phone calls to ensure his administration's involvement doesn't come to light. Real presidential stuff. For a while, it seemed like the cover-up might actually work. The burglars were convicted in early 1973 and the media had started to move on. But as it turns out, not everyone was content with letting the story fade into the background. Enter Washington Post reporters Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein. These two journalists, with the help of an anonymous source known as Deep Throat, and yes, they really chose that code name, began digging into the break-in and the cover-up. Their reporting started uncovering some seriously shady dealings in the Nixon administration. Connections to creep, illegal wiretaps, hush money, and more. And this was no longer just about a break-in. It was about the lengths to which the, the highest office in the land would go to hide its dirty laundry. So fast forward to May 1973. Congress establishes a Senate committee to investigate Watergate. These televised hearings became must-watch TV for millions of Americans. And suddenly, people were glued to their sets, watching senators grill White House staff about what they knew and when they knew it. Think of it like today's reality TV, only with fewer roses and more subpoenas. But the real bombshell came in July 73, when a White House aide revealed that Nixon had secretly recorded all his conversations in the Oval Office. That's right, he taped everything. It's like Nixon watched every crime drama ever and decided, you know what, I think I'll leave a detailed audio record of my involvement in a felony conspiracy. What could go wrong? These tapes became the smoking gun. They contained conversations that directly implicated Nixon in the cover-up. The White House refused to hand over the tapes at first, leading to a legal battle that made its way up to the Supreme Court. In 1974, the Supreme Court ruled that Nixon had to hand over the tapes. And when those tapes were finally released? Well, let's just say it wasn't great news for Nixon. 
One particularly damning tape, known as the smoking gun tape, showed that Nixon had ordered the CIA to block the FBI's investigation just days after the break-in. At this point, even Nixon's most loyal defenders were starting to jump ship. Facing almost certain impeachment, Nixon made the decision that no U.S. president has ever made before or since. On August 8th in 1974, Richard Nixon announced his resignation. The next day, he boarded a helicopter and waved goodbye as he left the White House. And just like that, the 37th president of the United States was gone, replaced by his vice president, Gerald Ford, who, fun fact, would later grant Nixon a full pardon, ensuring he'd never face criminal charges for his involvement in Watergate. Because, you know, why should accountability get, get in the way of a good political deal? So, what's the legacy of Watergate? Well, for one, it shattered the American public's trust in government. Before Watergate, there was a certain belief that, yes, politicians might stretch the truth a little, but there were limits to the corruption. After Watergate, those allegiances were, were pretty much gone. It was a reminder that even the highest office in the land is not immune to scandal or corruption. The scandal also led to significant reforms in campaign finance and government ethics laws. Because apparently it took a president nearly getting away with an illegal cover-up to convince Congress that maybe, just maybe, they should have stricter rules about this sort of thing. But perhaps the most enduring legacy of Watergate is the phrase, what did the president know and when did he know it? It's become shorthand for political scandals everywhere. And if you've ever wondered why every controversy these days ends with a suffix gate, well, you can thank Richard Nixon for that. So there you have it. Watergate, the scandal that took down a president, shook a nation and gave future generations endless material for political satire and videos. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the scandal that redefined American politics, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching Outside View Scandals and remember, no matter how messy today's politics get, at least we are not taping our own crimes anymore. I think. See you next time and the next video is right here in the end screen.